M0FXB, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to have a quick look at the Wolf Aula Mode DDC DUC Transceiver. Now this one's been out for a couple of years now and I did make a previous video on this but it, I think it has stood the test of time. You can see here on the right hand side it's got a unique 3D waterfall spectrum display. It has built in CW decoding, FD8 decoding, dual antenna, it's got built in Wi-Fi. There is a 20 watt model and there's a 100 watt model which is actually a lot smaller than the 20 watt model. It's housed in a nice solid metal case. All the connectors and buttons are on the front so it's, it's very easy to operate. It is touch screen and there's actually quite a lot of information and resources out there for you to use this device and update the firmware ETC. If you look on the on the left hand side you'll see you've got sample, sample plus, zoom, zoom out, squelch, WPM. You've got buttons on the actual screen and above the waterfall stroke spectrum which is very, it's a very deep colourful design. You can see there's all the you know the selections that you would want are there. DNR, noise blank, blanker, notch, squelch, you know, preamp, changing your bands. And look on the right hand side here, 70 centimeters, of course HF six meters and two meter transmit. If you look here, it says that it transmits from naught to 200 megahertz. So it by the looks of it, and I haven't tested it, it won't transmit on 70 centimeters, but you'll be able to listen. So that's, I think that's a, a very good feature. And these aren't highly priced, you know. They're, you know, I'm not gonna say the price, check it out for yourself, but they're gonna be half the price of, of what you would pay for a top end make like Kenwood Icom Yesu. So scrolling down, you can see what you get in the box. It's quite, this model is quite a big model. The 100 watt model is a lot smaller, I would say. So we're just scrolling up the, uh, the listings here and looking on the right hand side, some more listings. Product specification, it's all listed there. Modulation type, CW, LSB, USB, AM, FM, W, home, and digital modes out of the box. You're not gonna have any problem. This one actually decodes CW on the screen of the device. Just scrolling down, looking at the modulation modes, variable attenuator, supply voltage, current voltage, dimensions, theoretical torque range circle, what's that? But anyway, keep looking. So this is a, a very nice picture of it. And the thing is, it does look great in the flesh. I've watched videos and I'm gonna link in a video that I just watched where you can upgrade the firmware if you've got the, if you've had one of these already and you just fancy upgrading. It's got broad cast radio, built-in standing wave scanner, built-in decoder, seven inch screen, 24 kilohertz broadband spectrum display, waterfall optional 3D spectrum. And then it says here, 0 to 60 megahertz, 136 to 174 transmission. I wonder if there's a hack for that, I bet there is. And Wi-Fi, you think, why do you need Wi-Fi? You probably need it for FT8 modes. And channel storage, there's the display, not the best picture, but you can see how it, to have a big display like a seven inch and to have all these bands at your fingertips, you know, it's gonna be fun. Yeah, there's no getting away from it. And you've got the sort of sig the, the older style signal meter that we're seeing quite often nowadays on modern radios. People just like it. Look at the ICOM 7610, they've got two of these. Uh, full screen touch menu selections, there's your 3D option there. There's your built-in Wi-Fi module. Uh, so what does it say about that? More information can be synchronized through Wi-Fi connection to the network. You can connect to the computer through Type-C and use software that controls the TS2000, such as Ham Radio Deluxe. So that's, that's what it says. Built-in TF card slot. Looks like a Yesu microphone to me. RTTY. Product accessory diagram. So it's saying what you get in the box basically, but look at all the connectors on the back, two antennas, is that a 232 port? And a, a cooling fan there, I mean, it's quite hard to see that. It says here, ATN antenna interface, two pairs of M-type antenna inputs, supply voltage, T and RX outdoor backup antennas, SMA interface, is that what they are? A couple of SMAs there, I can see them now, a couple of SMAs there. It's gonna have a speaker out, isn't it? Everything's labeled. 
Got some feet there at the bottom, grounding, cooling fan. Zastone 7500 is, I mean, this comes in quite a few different names. Uh, this one's called the Zastone. And look at all the information there. It looks like there's a nice box there. I'm not going to read all that to you, but. So there you are. I thought I'd just put it in. Let me just quickly show you the links I've got. Now, oh, there's some close ups of the back. Let me show you some of the links I've got here. So let's go to the GitHub. There's a big GitHub link. Of course, I'll put that in the in the description. Uh, what else have we got? I'm just stretching it out a bit. I'm not going to show you what's in all the links, but I'll add the link. X Gerdron, it says here, yeah, UA3 REO DDC transceiver. Loads of info and links there. I also found this. It's a different case, but it's the same radio. And I found all the firmware links. Thanks to the video by uh, N4GW. So I'll link that video in. It shows you the full firmware update process. And what's this one here? Here's the group that you can join. Okay. There is a Telegram group as well. And there's links in there for the Telegram group. So, and there's, uh, let's see if we can find a Facebook group. Yes, there is. Okay. Bye for now. 7-3.